Okay, welcome back. Now we've spoken a lot in prior lessons about the concepts of the architecture for modeling, uh, how we mechanically model things and what the benefits are for doing so. But in this session we're going to talk a little bit about the steps for modeling the enterprise data warehouse layer. So when we're dealing with the enterprise warehouse layer, we're talking about that persisted permanent store of data. Integrated, non-volatile, time variant, subject oriented, auditable data that we're going to persist over time. So when we model that, we're going to be using data vault modeling approaches and we need to identify those core business keys and hubs that we're going to work with. But what's the process we go to when we typically look at modeling a data warehouse? Well, one of the first things we tend to do, of course, is to look towards the sources to see what are the things that we need to try to bring in within this current scope. Well, let's take a look at the board a little bit and consider some of the pieces here. If we look towards the um, source systems for giving us some ideas on the scope and the naming conventions and the types of data we're bringing in, uh, that's certainly, again, the most common thing we have been doing as a way to get information about modeling my, my enterprise warehouse. In here, I can identify hubs. I can identify links and relationships. I might look at just packets of the source databases themselves. I might analyze files from the sources and from other external sources that are out there. I might look to the technical metadata. What are the field descriptions, attribute descriptions, data file definitions, things that I give me a feel for how things work. I might actually look into the tables themselves, take a look at the data, find out what the data looks like, what things are being used, what kind of values do we have, and then also whatever definitions may be available to me, even documentation from the systems and that type of thing. Now this has been the most common thing we have been doing over time, and certainly it's a, you know, approach that has worked over the years. But given the things that we know today, we know now that we're looking for that enterprise data warehouse to be something that's going to last 10 to 20 years, not that three to five years of a source system. And we want something that's going to be integrated across multiple systems, enterprise-wide, not just something that's going to be specific to one division or department. Now, as we've learned in previous lessons, we might have multiple different source systems where the situation is that those source systems have um, key references and table naming conventions that don't really apply to the business meaning of what we're looking for. But they're how they happen to be captured by the data source itself. So to give you just a little visual on here then, we have here multiple sources. These will be boxes for now. Um, you know, they say if you can draw a perfectly straight line, there's a problem with you. So I don't have any problems apparently because I don't draw a perfect straight line. Okay, so here, here we have a bunch of them. And within the first scope of what I'm looking for, I may be looking at this first set as I kick off my enterprise warehouse. But over time, the scope is going to expand. And as time passes by, there will also be new ones that come in that I haven't seen before. So there's going to be new sources over time. And we know this to be true. Um, when I go towards the central model, I'm actually looking for one centralized view of the data that comes in. I'm looking to get to one centralized view. Now, if you think about it, if something in here is defined as, for example, um, person, as we mentioned in one of our prior um, lessons, the person really isn't being used from the broader enterprise-wide perspective, I wouldn't necessarily want to anchor my EDW model with the concept of person as being a core hub because that's really not a core hub as far as the business is concerned. Especially if that concept of person, let's say for example, existed only in this one system. Let's say this one system here has the concept of person in it. All the other ones have the concept of customer, which is what I'm looking for. If I use person in here because it's part of the initial scope, and then later, as is bound to happen, this source system goes away. I'm left afterwards with a warehouse model that's built around a key that has nothing to do with the business, right? So 
Does this happen? Sure, this happens all the time. And that's one of the reasons why we need to re-engineer a warehouse, because it was based on keys and concepts from what I would argue is largely a random sampling of source systems. Why is it random? Because in a 10, 20 year window, given the broader scope of where an enterprise warehouse is going, the first initial in scope source systems are just a temporary instance. They're just a random sampling as far as the warehouse is concerned. So how do I deal with this? Well, I think we start to look at this instead. When I'm modeling my core hubs, relationships, and satellites, I want to look towards the business processes, those permanent long-term business processes for how my business works. I want to look at other enterprise initiatives that are contemplating the enterprise concepts of data, things like MDM, if those exist, things like IBM Business Glossary, or those types of things that happen here. I may look to existing semantic or logical models that have to do with modeling the business, have to do with modeling the broader level business context. I may look at current marts. Now, you'll notice I didn't just say current marts. I'm saying current utilized marts, those ones that are actually important to the business and they use every day, because those are giving you a clue as to keys that are really important on a business level, not the technical level that we have over here. So it's really a good idea to focus on currently utilized marts in that case. And perhaps the most important thing is going back to our roots in IT and basing a lot of this on business interviews with the core business parties for the in-scope concept. So if this is around sales and accounting, I take my time to work with sales and accounting to understand what those core business terms are. And of course, ideally, I have a BICC, um, Business Intelligence Competency Center, I have some kind of a um, business uh, warehouse group that includes representatives from the other parts of business as well. So we have a good idea of that. I may also include things like industry models, if you're using those for reference, because commonly accepted industry-based terms are more likely to be uh, more permanent or more uh, usable business terms, again, than those terms we find in source systems. And then there might be uh, a collection of different taxonomies that are available um, for me to look at that have to do with my industry, with my business. So instead, I may start now looking into all these factors and criteria as my design input when I'm modeling the enterprise data warehouse. Now, if you kind of think about it this way, we've been doing this. We recognize, I think, that we should be doing more of what's on the right side. Um, as an extreme, I think in the past we've done a lot of it where it's only this and very little business intervention or um, interviews. Um, we recently worked with a group that actually designed this entire model based only on the things on the right and did not even have that team exposed to even seeing what the sources were before they finished modeling the enterprise warehouse layer. Now I'll let you think about that for a minute. Modeling the warehouse layer, the entire vault for the enterprise data warehouse without ever having seen the source systems. It's an interesting paradigm and I can say that, again, it's not necessarily something I would fully recommend, but it's something that I would say brings us closer to what we should be doing which is focusing more energy on the right here than we do on the left. Um, I'm kind of data centric myself, so I'm certainly going to want to see what's in here as well. And it is important to me because in the end, I am going to have to pull data from here to bring it across. But how do we keep it in our minds that we make sure we're not focused on building a person hub as my core business key when in fact that system goes away and what I really wanted was customer based on everything else the business told me. Certainly, I think in that case, I made a mistake. That's, that should not be the way I built the warehouse. So we should be looking more to the right. So when you're modeling these things, and let's go back to the slides. When we're modeling these things, um, we want to keep in mind that we are focused on enterprise-wide business keys. And I know we talk about this quite frequently, but it can't be reiterated enough. Um, the enterprise-wide business keys are not going to be, in practice, typically, 
the ones that are one-to-one -one with any given source system. So that's just a, a given fact of the way things are today. If we're actually to move into a situation where we do better with source systems as new ones are built, we need to do a better job in focusing on what's important from an enterprise-wide key perspective so that input can be part of the requirements for building new systems. Eventually, we will get better. But for today, we still have these issues. So enterprise-wide business key. Look to the business for identifying and defining your business keys. Figure out how to look towards interviews, uh, business models, process, and avoid getting caught up in particular source systems. What, by the way, one of the things you can ask yourself is if you're having trouble with a particular source that doesn't match, just ask yourself three years from now when it's gone, how does that residual impact affect what I did with the, with the warehouse? And if that's not a clean separation, revisit what you're doing. That should be something you should look at. Now, when, when you're complete and you've done your stuff, now start to look at how I'm going to integrate a new source. Now look at how you integrate a new source. And keep in mind, that continual mapping and integrating a new source is part of the job of your data warehousing BI team into the future. So you're going to have new sources all the time. Uh, it's just a constant flow of new sources. So um, when you're done with your core constructs, now look to how you map them uh, in with the source systems. And then establish procedures for how are you going to do this integration in the future. Now we have a session where we talk about agility, and of course one of the agility concepts is EDW machine. How do we um, take new things that come in, bring them into the system? How good are we at doing that? And that's part of what we need to establish procedurally so that we're in a um, good position to be able to integrate new sources effectively. So um, take some time to think about that and uh, give it some thought, and we'll see you in the next session.